Okay, it's time to talk a little seriously about what's going on here. What I've got here is a circular track made of uh, some plastic irrigation tubing and a ball, a steel ball, running around the track. I've made the track as level and smooth as I possibly can. And over here I have a little electronics module and inside the can is an electromagnet and uh, an optical sensor system so that when the ball comes around the shadow triggers the optical sensor system which then through the electronics module pulses the electromagnet very briefly and the green the green light there the green LED shows when the electromagnet is pulsed and for how long okay so the ball is going around and uh, from previous runs we know how to estimate the power dissipation of the ball because we can launch it from a known height and time the number of times that it goes around the circle so we know the gravitational potential energy that we put into the ball converting it to kinetic energy by the ramp and then we know how long it takes to dissipate that energy to make the ball come to a stop now the, I've got a I've got my Phillips counter hooked up to the electronics module and we're timing uh, the rotations there. Okay, and so what we're getting, that's actually in uh, milliseconds there, so that's 4.5 seconds. And the ball is consistently running somewhere between 4.3 and 4.5 seconds as it goes around that track. There's 4.466 seconds. Okay, now this counting system is very accurate. It's, uh, as you can, all those digits are significant there, so we're down into the tenth of a microsecond in terms of the timing. Um, this thing has an oven controlled uh, an oven temperature controlled crystal oscillator for reference in it, and those are real times. Okay, at any rate, uh, we know now that we have a baseline rotation of somewhere between 4.3 and 4.5 seconds, and we could be tracking this very accurately um, with automated recording or by watching it with a video camera so that we know how long it takes for that ball to go around. Now we can start doing things. We can add magnets or ramps or gates or whatever we like and we'll be able to tell if whatever manipulation we've done has hurt or helped uh, by adding more energy or subtracting energy. Okay, Because we know the baseline timing, we know how long it takes to go around the circle on average, and so we can tell if our manipulations have hurt or helped. And this is not subjective, this is completely instrumental, so you're not guessing, you're not putting in uh, your own personal biases. Now what I have over here is a little magnet and I've, I think the rubber cement is ready to go. I've got it there. So I'm going to stick it down in as neutral an orientation as possible. That is facing, just facing the ramp so that the field is across the ramp. So we should be seeing an attraction on both in and out. And according to all the books, that should be symmetrical, right? Okay, so let's see if that has affected our time around the circle at all. It takes two uh, circles for the counter to get a count uh, as it's uh, opening and closing the gate. Well, look at that. Now that looks like it might actually have helped a little bit, doesn't it? Because now 
we are in fact getting a slightly faster speed around the circle, or are we? It does look like it's hovering more down around 4.3 seconds, whereas before it was fluctuating up to 4.5 or so. This is interesting to me because when I started out to do this experiment, I was thinking that the thing would actually slow down and go uh, up to about 4.7 seconds, which is what it was doing when I decided to do this experiment. Okay, so here we have a result that's a little surprising to me. Uh, it's possible that adding that magnet has um, reduced the variability in the system. It's possible that uh, putting the weight there of the magnet has warped the board somewhat. It's possible in some strange realm that the field of the magnet is non-conservative and that you're actually seeing um, an energy increase in the rotation there. I find that really hard to believe. So again we have here a tantalizing result. And now what I'm going to do is remove the magnet so here we've been seeing uh, we've been seeing times around the circle of uh, 4.3 to 4.4, and before I think it was a little bit higher than that when the magnet was missing. So let me quickly let's see on this next circle. Uh, now I'll take the magnet away and stick it back over here in the corner where it was. And now let's look at the counter again. Now I would guess that uh, the speed around the circle without the magnet should be a little bit greater because the conductive steel ball passing through the magnet's field, even though it's being attracted and then in one direction sped up and slowed down on the other side going out, uh, the field of the magnet should be inducing some eddy currents in the ball itself and those should result in uh, in losses eventually. So I'm thinking that with the magnet removed the speed around the circle should be a little bit greater than it is with the magnet in place. And uh, now we're getting speeds around the circle of 4.25, 4.26, 4.27, oh there was a slow one, 4.33 The system is very, very sensitive to dust on the track, to wind currents, to all kinds of things like that. So that's why you need a bunch of trials to get, or rather a bunch of rotations, a bunch of samples to get a reasonable average. Okay, now I'm going to stick that magnet back on there. It's a little adjustment. And then we'll go back to the counter. Okay, I'm going to try to keep this video short, so I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to say that um, the results of this test are inconclusive, but a little tantalizing to me, um, because they show either no change or maybe a slight 
uh, speeding up even with the magnet in place. Whereas I would have expected, and I firmly did expect before I started this experiment, that there would be a, a clear difference that the magnet would, um, would actually produce a decrease, a slowing down of the circle. So experiments are great. They tend to surprise or please or create data controversy. And I'm sure this will be very controversial when, it, uh, when people start talking about it. Uh, I'm going to experiment some more with different magnet arrays, and we'll see what happens. Thank you for watching.